Hair Blazer, for over 13 years now, I've had the experience of being in the healthcare provider role and not really in the caregiver role through a healthcare system. And that all changed last year with my mom, who's no longer with us, but it's now happening again with my dad. And I've had lots of different experiences interacting with a healthcare system over the past month and a half. And I have lots of thoughts and opinions just being on the other side. What I want to share in this video is one of the most important things I think healthcare professionals need to keep in mind, but also I want to share how this can help you, the care blazer, in your day-to-day -day interactions with your loved one. So first, let me explain. So my dad had, he fell, he had a really bad fall. And he was in the hospital for about a month and he was in and out of ICU. He had a really bad reaction to one of the medicines they gave him. And there was just a lot going on there. And he was then after a month transferred to a skilled nursing facility for rehabilitation. And I want to share specifically just my experience in one day with the skilled nursing facility. When I showed up, like nobody greeted me. Like there's a front desk and there's a worker there. But that worker was looking at a video on her phone and didn't acknowledge that I was even there. So at this point, of course, I have no idea what room he's in, whatever. So I have to interrupt her and ask where my dad's at. She looks up in the computer and she's basically like, your dad, he's not in the system. I'm like, okay, well, I know he's here. I've, I've talked to the transferring hospital and he's here. And she's like, okay, well, you can just walk back there. There's a nursing station and he's probably there. So I just walked back there. But initially my thought is, why do I have to interrupt the person at the front desk? And please, 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 please. I know there are amazing workers out there. I know it. I was in the field. I've worked with them. There are amazing workers everywhere. But when you have an emotionally distressing event happening, meaning a family member is sick to the point where they're requiring some sort of medical intervention, emotionally, we are already in a place where we're a little bit distressed. And then the interaction we get and the experience we have, it means a lot. So, you know, initially that wasn't great. So, when I arrived, there's lots of people in my dad's room and they're getting him situated. He probably had been there maybe 30 minutes. And so the nurse manager, I did not know that at the time, I should say somebody went into his room and they're basically like, I have a stack of papers here for you to sign. But if you just say it's okay for me, I'll go ahead and sign them for you and you don't have to go through it all. So basically he was setting it up. So my dad would say, yeah, you can just sign them. Obviously going to make his job easier. And maybe ultimately my dad would have chose that. But basically the way he presented it is like, there's a bunch of papers here. It's going to take a lot for you to sign. I can just sign them for you if you give me permission. My dad's like, yeah, sure. And then the guy walks out. I'm standing there. He just walks past me. So I interrupt him and I say, and I have a big message for you at the end too. And I say, hi, are you the nurse? And he's like, no, I'm the nurse manager. The nurse is over there. And then he points. He doesn't give me his name. <laughs> so I'm like trying to look at the name tag. Like what's his name? Nothing. And then he points over there where the nurse is, but there's two people standing there with their back to me. He doesn't give me their name and he just walks off. And I'm like, is this where we are in healthcare? We can't even do the basics, the basics, basics, basics. I was in a support room recently inside of my care course program. We do weekly support rooms. And one of the amazing care blazers in there was sharing that her mom's care facility, she couldn't read the name tags on the staff. And so she was talking to other just family members saying, do you ever notice this? Does that bother you? And the administrators heard that. And immediately, like the next day, all the name tags were better and improved and the font was approved. And the administrators were like, it never dawned on me that the name tag should be bigger. Why am I bringing all of this up? I bring it up for several reasons. Many times when we are thinking about how do we give better care to patients and even you, like how do you give better care to your loved one with dementia? How do we respond to certain situations? We're often looking for some big magic like tip or some fancy new approach or something that sounds clever or creative. And what I want to say is none of that matters if we can't get back to the basics. And the basics include things like acknowledging somebody's presence smiling at them and making eye contact, introducing yourself if you're somebody new or you're somebody unfamiliar or not a regular person to that person, whether it's a family member or the person with dementia, taking time to give names when 
Names are important to the family member. Basic, basic stuff. How have we gotten so far away from this? And so what I want to encourage is number one, actually, I want to know what do you think is missing from professional care? When you go and get professional care yourself or for your loved one with dementia, what do you wish there was more of? I'm really curious because I imagine a lot of it is going to be the bare basics that we have forgotten, we've gotten away from. We don't think they're important, but I'm here to say they are the most important. It's the foundation. So let me know in the comments below what you think. And then for you, your own, like this is mostly for healthcare providers out there, like my frustration right now, but as a care blazer, are you doing the basics? For your loved one? Are you acknowledging them, giving eye contact to them, smiling at them, taking time to just be present with them? That goes so far. Like I was able to regulate myself because I have all of my brain functioning right now, at least most days. My frontal lobes are intact. I can keep what I want to say in my brain and say something appropriate so that I don't ruin the relationship. I'm doing that all the time naturally because my brain is fully functioning. So I prevented a situation from really blowing up that day. But for for people with dementia, they might not have that ability. And so sometimes the agitation, the blowing up, the anger, the resentment, the resistance, all of those things that we're viewing as the resistance and frustration, it could be as simple as changing our behavior to make sure we're doing the basics. Are we doing the basics? We cannot forget all of the creative, clever, fun, new, unique approaches. Those are all great to continue to look into and try, but you have to get back to the basics first. Let me know what are your most important basics below. And here's to one day having a better standard for dementia care. And in fact, if I had to say like, what was one of my big missions of Careblazers? It would be raising the standard of dementia care. I don't believe the standard of dementia care is acceptable, yet we accept it as a society largely because of insurance companies paying and just what we've accepted over the years. And I know for family members, I'm in it right now, our hands are tied. We have to accept what it is. And we're paying a ridiculous amount of money for subpar care for people who don't even have specialty training in dementia. And let alone that, like that's my ultimate goal. But can we just get back to the treat people like human beings that you acknowledge and that you see? If we can do that, that would be wonderful. All right, Care Blazers, that's what I have for you today. I am hoping and wishing that we all have a higher standard of dementia care in the future, a higher standard of just regular health care in the future. We are dealing with actual human beings, actual family members with emotions, actual people who are sick and needing help. We're not just a t statistic. We're not just a dollar sign. We're not just another number. It certainly feels that way in much of my experience over the past month and a half. And I am hoping this is not your experience and I know it will change and things are already getting better. I've already been talking with staff. I've already been giving gift cards and bringing treats and doing all the things I can do to help make this situation better. This doesn't mean everybody in healthcare is like this, but um, way too many people are and it needs to change. And I imagine this isn't just a healthcare problem. I imagine business situation has this problem. What are your thoughts? I'm sending you so much love. Bye. Also, Nico gets a belly rub for every person who subscribes from this video. So if you haven't already, click the red subscribe button. It's totally free. And Nico says, thank you very much.